I call to order the October 25th, 2021 business meeting of the Cincinnati Board of Education. We welcome everyone and request everyone in the audience to please silence your cell phones and electronic devices. Ms. Bates, please lead us in the pledge. Ms. Wagner, please call roll. Mrs. Bates? Present. Ms. Bolton? Present. Mrs. Bowers? Here. Mr. Lindy? Mr. Messer? Mr. Morosky? Here. President Jones? Here. I need a motion. I'm sorry. Members of the public who wish to speak may do so by clicking the chat button now. That feature will be open for your request for five minutes. Please submit your name, affiliation to district, your school community, your topic, and your contact information if you want a direct response to any questions you might have. Okay, I need a motion to approve the minutes from the special meeting October the 11th, 2021, the business meeting October the 11th, 2021, special meeting October 16th, 2021, business meeting work session October 16th, 2021. Come in. Second. Second. Okay. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Okay. Interim Superintendent Ahmad, please introduce this evening's presentation. It is a great honor to introduce Principal Taylor Porter from Gamble Montessori High School for our CPS Bright Highlight. Okay, good evening. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you, uh, President Jones, entire CPS school board. It's a pleasure to see you all. Uh, Superintendent Ahmad, Ms. Wagner, good evening. And I will be brief tonight. I have a few slides in the queue uh, that'll help guide my talking points here. Uh, but the first thing I want to say is how just honored I am to this very day and this moment to have the chance to lead Gamble Montessori High School located at 3036 Work Road. Um, it has been such a joyous ride uh, for me uh, over these past three years, and I'm really excited about where we are and where we're about to go. Um, there's no, there's nothing good that'll happen for us at Gamble if it's just about me. And so I wanna say uh, thank you to all of my teachers, um, all of my counselors, and all the staff, support staff, to help get the work done at Gamble. And I wanna give a special shout out um, to my new assistant principal, uh, Mr. Brandon Fremming, um, not with me this evening for some family obligations, but he's a, a tremendous assistant principal um, in his first year. And so I'm just really grateful uh, to be serving alongside Mr. Fremming. So uh, with that being said, we can go ahead and move forward. I have the clip there. Okay, there you go. So I'll show this, and I don't know if you'll be able to see from where you're located. And by now, I'm hoping you've already caught wind of this thing called the Green Ribbon Award. I had the uh, pleasure um, to go out to Washington, D.C., United States Department of Education, and receive this award on behalf of our school building and on behalf of our district. And so um, if you don't know, there were 27 schools in the entire nation that were recognized uh, as a Green Ribbon Award winning school. There was only one um, in the state of Ohio that was recognized with this honor, and it was Gamble Montessori of Cincinnati Public Schools. Uh, I will call attention to um, Director Robin Brandon, uh, Manager LaKendall Heights, and my plant operator, Edwin Sam. There's at least 100 people in addition that helped us earn this, but one of the critical components um, are terrific facilities um, that support environmental uh, friendliness and sustainable practices and eco-friendly um, facilities. And so thanks to the huge investment our district made in our building, I think that's what helped make this possible on top of our curriculum, on top of our staff, on top of our students and our community. So uh, thank you to CPS for the big investment uh, you all committed to a few years back. 
Um, there are so many things that we're proud of at Gamble, um, including our uh, academics and preparing our students for 21st century skills. Um, I won't read all these bullet points here, but this is going to give you a glimpse what we prioritize as Montessorians and as a Montessori uh, secondary program. Um, curiosity and creativity, uh, critical thinking and problem solving, uh, work of the head, hands and heart, um, commitment to living our mission, vision, and core values, building wide every day in every location. Um, those core values would be community, peace, hard work, uh, respect, and of course, learning. Um, right now, our school is close to 700 students school-wide, grade seven through 12. Uh, that is a significant um, increase in enrollment uh, from where we were a few years ago. Uh, we, over the past three years, we've gained roughly 20% as far as whatever our student body is. So I think that is uh, just tremendous. And I think it speaks to our curriculum, speaks to our facilities, uh, but most importantly, I think it speaks to the reputation that our staff has established over the years as to why so many families continue to show up and uh, we continue to serve them. Um, some of the things that um, I wanna highlight um, will be in our programs and opportunities. Um, at our junior high, we've got five communities. That's how we structure our school. The names <laughs> look a little bit unique, uh, but that's because they are generated uh, from the students sitting in our classroom. And so at our junior high level, we've got five communities. Uh, community of Original Learners, or Cool, Legacy of Learners, Luminous Achievers, United Leaders, and Zen Community of Hope, Zen Co. Um, what makes a junior high community? For those that didn't know, that's going to be two core teachers, intervention specialist, and a paraprofessional. Um, all four of those individuals help staff that community. Okay, each community will have an average of 60 or so students, and that'll make up all five communities. Um, at the high school level, it's very similar, but um, it's a little different. We've got two communities for our ninth and 10th grade students, the A-Team and the Universal Trailblazers. And then for the juniors and seniors for 11 and 12th grade, we have the 11, 12 team. Um, and so if you consider the enrollment growth that I spoke of, I think it's only a matter of time before we're in a position to add another 11, 12 team. And so we'll cross that bridge uh, when we get there. Um, at the high school level, the communities will have one math teacher, one science teacher, one social studies, uh, one ELA teacher, and then two interventionists are on each team um, to serve the students that uh, come to us that might need um, special attention or might have an IEP or anything of that nature. Um, we've got about 160 students total in those communities, and we do have a very uh, unique curriculum, which uh, we do looping. Uh, and that means students are with those teachers for two consecutive years, and we take care of business um, in a very unique way that's specific to Montessori education. And so we've been very successful by doing that. Um, we've got some things, that, like I said, that make us uniquely special. I mean, I think the Gators Give Back and Service Learning uh, is a part of that. And so in the early years of Gamble Montessori, uh, some of the other high schools, uh, there's there's been other service requirements and efforts to keep high expectations for each community member uh, and to implement research-based methods of best practice, uh, service learning, Gators Give Back was revamped. And then for Gamble Montessori students, completion of Gators Give Back is required um, to, to be able to matriculate and graduate from our uh, program, okay? Uh, I think there are a few um, other academics that I wanna call attention to before I dive into athletics and extracurriculars. Um, we're in our first year of an American Sign Language program that only came about um, through uh, research and student entrance surveys ran by our counseling department and really receiving feedback from our student body and our LSDMC team and our community at large. Uh, that advocated for an additional elective offering by way of American Sign Language. So that's something we're all really, really excited that we now offer. Um, Gamble Montessori also offers our district's only Korean language program. Um, which really a lot of students um, enjoy and even come to our school for. Uh, and lastly, our agricultural, agrication and agribusiness program, I think really um, deserves a lot of credit uh, for attracting families to our program. Um, like many schools, uh, we've got great sports teams. Um, our football team uh, will be playing uh, this Saturday at 7 p.m. in our first ever uh, playoff game. So Ooh, congratulations goodness. to Coach Rob. 
Thank you. Congratulations to Coach Robert Rachel, who's done a terrific job uh, being a good mentor for our young men and making sure we understand what it means to be a, um, a high-performing student athlete. So thank you, Coach Rob, for your hard work. Um, of course, we have terrific volleyball programs, boys and girls basketball programs, and many other sports. Um, our dance team, uh, led by Ms. Jasmine Johnson-Hayes, is phenomenal, as well as many other clubs. I think Unique to Gamble Montessori would be our video gaming club led by Mr. Scott Sewell. So there's really a lot um, for our students and staff and community to be proud of. Um, there's a few events. I know Superintendent Amat, you joined us for one of those events earlier in the year, our community bonfire. Uh, that was a terrific opportunity to meet teachers, uh, meet the fall sports teams, and to really have good fellowship amongst our student body. Um, there's many, many other events that our students and community really get excited about. I want to call attention to our Montessori market, uh, which will take place um, near the end of the school year in the month of May. And that's really, a, I think, a unique opportunity um, for our students to tap into entrepreneurial mindsets, business opportunities. And it's really a great way for our students to learn throughout the school year, um, harvest honey, tap a tree for syrup, make a candle, make their own tea and really have a chance to go through that process with your hands. And then in May, we do a community market that allows our students a chance to learn what business and transacting can really look like um, on the other side of that. So I think the Montessori market and the bonfire are two that I would call your attention to. All right, so as I wrap up here, I'd like to circle back to where I started. Thank you all uh, for inviting me down this evening. Uh, my assistant principal, Mr. Fremming, thank you for helping not only prepare this deck, uh, but work hard to help me uh, lead our school. And I want to thank all of my teachers and support staff for making Gamble Montessori uh, one of the best schools uh, this city um, has. So thank you. Have a good evening. Okay. Thank you. Um, don't go anywhere, Ms. Taylor. Board members, questions or comments? I knew you would. <laughs> hey, Ms. Porter. It's good How to see are you, Ms. Bowers. <laughs> Um, first of all, um, I'm a little biased, and everybody else here already knows that. Um, the parent of a um, Gamble graduate, also as a community partner for years, all the way back to Data Montessori, before we were even, we were beginning. Um, but I would like to thank you for, uh, for one, congratulations on your continuous growth. That was huge, and I would like to thank the board for the decision to work with Gamble and expanding allowing you that opportunity to, to do so. Um, and congratulations on your award. That I was just talking about Gamble and Health and Safety today about a whole nother initiative that we'll talk about later on. Um, but again, let me ask you about this. The Thanksgiving feast, is that when you have your middle school with the tea? Is that the intimate kind of event? It with is. students we, at the school and they kind of dress? So we do have a feast and it's been postponed because of the environment we're in with COVID. Okay. Um, but that is the event you're referring to. Uh, it's a community-based event. Um, our whole school participates in a, a celebration of that season. Yeah, congratulations on that. I, that was one of the first, the one thing I loved about you. So that's it. Thank, thank you. Ms. Bates? I have a question. Um, do you collaborate with Clark Montessori and is there a district seven through 12 Montessori uh, curriculum? Yes, we do collaborate with Clark quite a bit. I think that's been a practice going back um, to even how we became um, accredited by the American Montessori Society. And so um, for myself and uh, Mr. Higgins, we are frequently um, in text, phone calls and email uh, conversations um, to make sure we're just challenging each other and being thought partners and doing the good work. And then we even use some of our in-service days to allow teachers to collaborate um, from both schools. I know the most recent in-service day uh, we sent a team of four teachers over to their building uh, to work for some of that um, alignment as far as curriculum and making sure we're all um, in lockstep with best practices. And so collaboration is um, something we believe in. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Just go down the line, Mr. Morowski. My turn. Thank you, Mr. Porter. Uh, I just want to say congratulations on all the success there. Um, you know, it's not surprising, but also equally <laughs> Sorry, I <laughs> distracted easily. Um, uh, not surprising, but also equally uh, really 
awesome to hear that enrollment is going up. You know, the folks who are sitting up here, which I guess is four of us, um, that were around when we were talking about moving gamble, part of the part of the value proposition that we believed, I think, not to speak for more than myself, was that it would attract more people. And it's awesome to hear. Um, I like Miss Bowers and biased. Um, I don't have any children there. My child is not old enough to go there. Um, but I just think the offering, I think it's just such a unique place. And I just wanted to say this uh, publicly for those who don't know, it's, it's such a diverse student body population. And I'm not just talking racially and socioeconomically, but also learning styles. And that is not normal for a Montessori school. And a lot of ways, I just want to call that out. And I think y'all, um, you didn't say in your presentation, but I'm going to say it if it's okay. Um, I think you all are to be commended with your work with 504s, IEPs, and with students in the Montessori environment because that stuff's not easy. And so I just want you to know I see it, and um, I see what you all are doing. I think it's great, and I'm glad that the new building is going so well. And that award is so cool. Uh, so congrats. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Ms. Bolton. Yes, thank you. Um, I can uh, remember back, I think I – Met with you and we toured sort of the building and talked, uh, I think, in your first uh, weeks here. I remember you being a very boastful father about your daughter. I listened a lot to that, not surprisingly. Uh, but I also want to uh, compliment you for your leadership uh, out there. Um, I, I, when you mentioned facilities, I know in policy we talk also now about campuses. And you are a great example of, and your leadership team and your staff, of using your campus for the purposes of education. And granted, it's particularly designed well for a Montessori approach. Um, and uh, I, I think we should all kind of embrace this learning in place a little bit more. I, I actually think you're doing a lot uh, to make it possible for the west side where the great growth in Montessori education has occurred to have a high school of choice, if you will, on the west side. And I can remember back, I know it's several of us that were on the whole thing, but I can remember very distinctly Superintendent Mary Ronan mentioning when she first got wind that indeed uh, Mother of Mercy was going to be available. And could we think the unthinkable? And then to be embraced by the West Side in such a way was just very gratifying, and I appreciate it. I will, though, to take a moment of personal pride and, and say that we have a youngster at uh, uh, Parker Woods who is anticipating, based upon geographic boundaries, going to gamble. <laughs> and uh, just uh, sent your uh, presentation tonight to her grandmother to say, see, this is, this is where she's going to be going. So I'm very proud of that and very excited, but I will also tell you that Aiken is trying to give you a run for your money on the uh, green experience. So you may you don't have to worry about Clark anymore. Yeah, you outrun them on this, but watch out. Aiken is coming up to your left or right. She's biased. She's biased. Aiken. <laughs> I am uh, I am keenly aware. Yeah, I know you are. And uh, I do believe that we all do better when we all do better. And so you got it. congratulations to Aiken and we'll support um, back and forth as we would with any other school. I would say just I I'm I'm really in agreement with what you said. There's been so much good at Gamble. I'm really, really excited about where we are. Um, but I'll say tonight, like I would say to anyone in my building, I think this is just the beginning. Right. And there's still a lot more um, work, but a lot more positive news to come. So thank you all. I, I, yes, ma'am. Pam, sorry. I just want to get kudos to your more tie, and I just wanted to recognize that. I'm okay. sorry. I forgot. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm going to make a, a final comment here, but I'll be brief because people have pretty much said what I wanted to say. I was around when um, the we were talking about Gamble and that building. And I can remember going to a community event. Um, the previous superintendent and I went representing the district. The news uh, people were there and the room was packed. And there was mixed, mixed feelings there. And the, it, it ranged from we're happy that it's going to be a school to we're not happy that it's CPS schools. <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you. And, um, 
so as we evolved through that process, we heard a lot of community. We had lots of community input about it. And people were wanting an, an experience from Gamble where networking with the community was, was part of being there as, as a good partner. So I wrote down some things that I thought just sort of fit in with kind of what I was hearing. So you talk about the curriculum and some of the activities that you do. All of these things are things that I heard back then. And so it makes me feel good to know that you have all of these very different and unique programs and services. I, I like the, um, the descriptions around your service experiences for the kids. Um, I can remember when people were having meetings about what would the focus of the school, what's the academic focus? A lot of people wanted Montessori. A lot of people wanted different, you know, regular, traditional. Some wanted career and technical. But it seems like you have brought it all in in some kind of way. And I think that you should be recognized because it takes a great leader to do that. So I appreciate that. And um, congratulations on your award. Um, I think um, the community is should be proud to have a school like Gamble in their community. And we're not hearing, I know in the early stages, we were hearing about, oh, they're not cutting the grass and they're not doing this, either, but we're not hearing that anymore. So I appreciate that. Thank you for all your good work. You're welcome. See you soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Good evening. Thank you. We can clap. Yep. <laughs> yes, and we do have a pen from um, Gamble. Yes, thank you. Okay, so we are now at the item on our agenda for hearing the public consistent with state's direction to minimize public gatherings or convening the video conference to include opportunity for public comment. Each speaker will have two minutes and um, we'll direct all comments to the presiding officer. Consistent with board bylaws, the board has the ability to limit the hearing of the public on any single issue and will exercise the right to do so if needed. Once a request to speak has been granted, you will be invited to enter. Please click on the camera icon to go interactive. Provide your name, your affiliation to the district, your school community, your topic, and your contact information if you want a direct response to your question. This request is consistent with board protocol and we appreciate your compliance. We reserve the right to not permit you to speak if you do not comply. Again, each speaker will have two minutes and may only speak once. When your timer goes off, your time is up. Please refrain from discussing any personnel items. After speaking, you will briefly see the welcome screen again as you transition back to the live stream meeting. We ask that your public commentary be respectful of all those listening in. How many? One? Evening. Okay. Our speaker this evening is Herschel Daniels, Jr. Go ahead, Mr. Daniels. All right. Thank you. It's been a while since I've been uh, involved in CPS other than raising kids who attend CPS students after seven heart attacks, eight stents, and three deaths in 2016. Well, I'm back. Uh, I have a student in Hughes High School, and I'm inviting your staff to join us a meeting on November 18th in creating a coalition around the $341 billion in established Federal Reserve Bank-based community benefit agreements with a focus on the, the largest one, which starts on 1 January 2022, over four years with $500 million in philanthropic funding. In particular, I'm particularly looking to work with your staff to have CPS be a leading school in the United Nations Association of the USA. We have created pre-COVID an organization to do that. And by the way, uh, the world changed on August 2nd, 2022, 21. In case you didn't know, the United States voted along with the world to create a permanent forum on people of African descent, all 1.6 billion people around the world. And CPS has the chance to be a leader in student participation 
through our partners in the United Nations. As a nonprofit organization, we work within the United Nations on issues like George Floyd learned last year when we got his brother to be able to open the session on uh, policing in America. The report has been delivered, and now Cincinnati can be a leader in how that's implemented, and uh, students at CPS can demonstrate that. And last but not least, as a member of the African Scientific Institute Fellowship of 2,500 people of African descent who are science technologists, engineers, and mathematicians, I am focused on working with CPS uh, and our association. Oh, go ahead, go ahead and finish, Mr. Daniels. Go and ahead and bringing finish the last point. Okay, thank you, and and bringing that uh, focus to CPS to make it a world leader in graduation by 2030. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that's it for hearing of the public. Okay, all right, we'll move on. Does anyone have any kudos? I have one. Go ahead, Ms. Bowers. Yes, um, thank you, um, President Jones. I would like to give kudos to the team of the district-wide parent meeting that was Facebook Live. Uh, Superintendent Amat uh, presented, Ms. Casey Fisher. Also, uh, Ms. Meg Burroughs talked about uh, bullying and how what we're doing in the district around that. And of course, special thanks to Ms. LaRonda Thomas for her moderation and her information for our parents. So kudos to that group and that team. Thank you. Any other kudos? Ms. Uh, Bolton? Yes, forgive me again, an Aiken reference. <laughs> Can't help myself. I want to congratulate uh, the Aiken cross country team. Uh, they not only carried the championship at CMAC, but also were sixth in sectionals. Second female behind an Indian Hill runner and above Merrimont. So as a former Wyoming teacher, I'm thrilled about the Indian Hill and Merrimont uh, positioning, but glad to have Aiken running in that class. Good. So congrats and congrats, I think, to their coach. I know is, uh, I believe Aaron Parker and congratulations to their principal, Ms. Votal, for building a, a very, very warm and competitive productive culture up there. Thank you. Any other kudos? Oh, I have one. My kudo actually is not for um, a CPS activity employee, but um, uh, you all know I go to uh, physical therapy every day and almost every day I come by as our Aiken students are being uh, dismissed and are walking to that very tight bus stop on the corner of Hamilton and Belmont. And I want to give kudos to the folks who volunteer their time at Grace Episcopal Church to sit in that door. They open the doors on that corner and they provide water to our kids. And they talk to them. And I've heard while I'm standing there at the light and, and, and not standing, but in the car, when I turn the corner, you can hear them engaging and I see smiles. And it's not often that we see that and we need more of that in our community. I have not had the opportunity to get out of the car because my son drives too fast, but I haven't had an opportunity to stop and thank them personally, but I will do that. But I want to give them public kudos for doing that for our kids. We really appreciate that. Okay. All right, go ahead. Um, you all probably know this, but I feel the need to give uh, this man a kudo, um, Harvey Lewis at uh, SCPA. Um, as a person who runs about 100 miles a week myself, Harvey could not be any uh, more of a like role model. Of course, he's won the Bad Water, which is a 100-mile race, the lowest point to the highest point in the United States. Um, but he uh, recently set the world record for miles run at 354 miles. Um, and uh, he was given uh, 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 the Southwest Ohio delegation, uh, Jane Simon at SCPA, I think coordinated it and got a lot of folks to come and they sort of surprised him in the hallway. He was out there with his students. I get to see him running every now and then because he runs the school and he runs right by like where I go. Um, I don't run as fast or as far. <laughs> I've done 50 miles, <laughs> so I'll get there. 
Um, but 354 miles running is a world record. Um, one of our teachers um, at SCPA, and uh, I know he loves his job um, more than he even loves running, but I think uh, I almost forgot what I wanted to call that out. Okay, thank you. All right, I think we're ready for retirement, Ms. Bates. I have one retirement to announce from our civil service personnel, and that is Donna Simpson, who is a paraprofessional. So we thank Ms. Simpson for her service to our children and congratulate her and wish her well in this new part of her life. Okay, thank you. So we're at the item on the agenda for board matters. We have one topic and um, transportation, Ms. Bolton. Yes, thank you. Uh, and I really appreciate the transportation department presentation um, at the finance committee meeting. And when we introduce those minutes at the next meeting, we can discuss some of the things that were presented. Um, just wanted to, to suggest though, in a timeliness issue, and, and we've since talked about some of this, but for the public's sake, uh, there is to be a survey for our seventh and eighth grade uh, families, I believe, in two of our high schools on the east side. And the idea about how would they feel about their seventh and eighth graders taking the yellow bus. And there is at least one vendor that is particularly interested in helping us out. Uh, it would be at a cost of uh, several hundred thousand dollars to do not the survey, but to deliver what we would be the optimum kind of service uh, if indeed families were interested. And I appreciate Mr. Messer bringing uh, to the table the issue of the seventh and eighth graders, but also want to emphasize that that additional money is for additional buses and drivers for that particular vendor. And it makes perfect sense, but some things that the board and the administration I know would be considering would be the on-time service of any of our vendors, and I know that's being monitored very, very carefully on a daily basis by the transportation department, but also knowing that we are having some of the required transportation um, uh, responsibilities that are still uh, having problems regarding on time. Uh, it might be, uh, as we look at that amount of money, if that vendor is able to be able to do something for the seventh and eighth grade uh, uh, pilot, it's possible with those additional buses or those additional drivers put to other purposes, be able to get the on time up for some of our most special kids that the federal government requires that we transport. So as the administration is contemplating that, we wanted to make sure that the public knew about the seventh and eighth grade a possibility pilot also want the board to know and the administration to to know that, um, that it's uh, probably is a good idea considering our future, but that also there are some things currently right now regarding on time that might also uh, influence where the the administration kind of takes us. And I'm very excited to know that the RFP that the transportation department's contemplating. Um, is a very wide open, everything's on the table kind of approach. So we want the public to know that they are working very hard on moving forward, but interested in knowing board reaction to a pilot regarding seventh and eighth grade to see what that might be, not versus, but also considering some of the other things that might help us on on time for our yellow bus and for our, our van fleet. So just wanted to bring that to the attention. It was too fast of a turnout round for the lot, but uh, would appreciate consideration and some dialogue. Well, okay. thank you. And really appreciate the Transportation Department working on all of these things. Okay, Ms. Bowers. Yes, thank you, Board Member Bolton. Can you share um, with the board or the, or the community as to how it was decided on two East Side School versus one on each side of the, of the district, of the highway of, of the district? I'm not the right person to do that, but they presented, the administration presented a very specific uh, 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 categorization and alignment as to what had to happen. Uh, there were two east side, it had to be the size, it had to be what were the private uh, parochial schools that were also available, 
and and there were two or three other steps that they used to uh, tone it down to something that would be meaningful and yet doable. So uh, they might want to participate more. The superintendent might want to ask Ms. Solano if you can come on up and answer the question. Um, it was one was a community school and the other was a magnet school, but Ms. Solano can give you details on the selection process. So um, after crunching out the numbers, looking at um, uh, where the students lived um, and the routing that's currently available, um, and then we were also limited by how many buses the vendor was able to provide. So we only had one vendor that could guarantee us 10 buses. Um, and so, for example, uh, one of the schools that people ask, well, why haven't you chosen that school? We didn't have enough buses to cover their seventh and eighth grade population. So as, as you men mentioned, uh, Ms. Bolton, there were various um, criteria that we had to use. Um, and one of them was, you know, where are the kids located in relationship to where the school is? Because obviously if, if the kids live clear across the city, uh, bus transportation to pick them up and pick up other kids would not be feasible. Um, and so based on the um, attendance area of where the current kids live, they chose two schools to start the pilot. And um, as I mentioned before in that meeting, uh, we have to look at um, on, on time performance as well for those vendors. So uh, this pilot would give us an opportunity to see what would it look like if we were to put 7th and 8th grade graders on the bus and what can we learn from that um, in the in in the idea of expanding it to other schools as well? Thank you, Ms. Solano. I, other questions? Um, no, no, Pam. Okay, Pam. hold on. You have a I'm, follow up? Yeah, because yeah, I just okay. probably am still not clear. Um, I know one's a magnet. I know one's a, a, a high school of choice. Uh, well, not a magnet. But I guess I'm not clear. Like if a parent was to inquire about how come our, we weren't selected for this, th the clarity in it is, were, are these kids selected because maybe they come from a farther place to their school? Is that what I'm hearing? So, yeah, it was based on um, where we could accommodate. We only have 10 buses. So where we could accommodate based on attendance area of where those kids, not attendance area, their, their home addresses in relationship to the school that they're attending. So that was one. And then also... How many kids? I mean, if we we had more kids than what 10 buses can use, uh, we could put on 10 buses and that wouldn't work either. And so that is the reason why we chose those two schools and one of those schools being um, a magnet school and one being, um, I don't, I know we don't have neighborhood schools, but one being uh, uh, just a school of choice. And I just want to be clear, the survey, we are not um, implementing the pilot until we get feedback. Yeah. Okay. okay. Maybe, okay. but we want okay. to um, make sure the families are fine with implementing the pilot first. So we're sending out a survey. Okay, Mr. Morawski. Is that okay? Uh, thank you, uh, President Jones. Thank you, Ms. Bolton. Thank you, Ms. Solano. Um, so I, I think the pilot. I think it's a sound idea. Um, as I've said here before, I would like to see RFPs issued for every service. So if we can start like chipping away at this anyway, we can start making incremental change, I think is important. <clears throat> Excuse me. But Ms. Bolton, you referenced um, students that had like special needs. Um, and then if this worked, like maybe figuring out using the service for others. I just wonder if you could talk a little bit more about that or like special circumstances. I think the pilot is a great idea to, to, as we move forward um, and try to plan what the future looks like. I'm just saying for that particular cost, the, the transportation folks shared with us our on-time percentages per vendor, and that still is not where it needs to be. And I'm just thinking if we were, if a vendor was willing to make that kind of contribution uh, to their own efforts, whether it's a, the 10 buses or <coughs> 
more drivers or whatever, would that make an impact on our on time in any of those categories? So I think there's just choices to be made as we as we really look to the future. And I'm I'm thrilled that we're putting everything on the table to think about the future. Okay. Great. Great update. Great update. Thank you. All right. Ms. Bolton, please present the following resolution for board consideration. I certainly will. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I present uh, Cincinnati Public Schools fiscal year 2021 20, 2022, an amended appropriation resolution, and I introduce hope for approval. And upon a second, I will like the, after the second, have the uh, treasurer uh, describe what this is. Okay, thank you. I need a second. Second. Okay, so we're into discussion. We're going to ask Treasurer Wagner to give us a little explanation. Certainly. Um, so every year, the board authorizes us to spend money through the appropriations resolution. And in this case, um, we receive more allocate, grant allocations from three separate grants in order for us to spend the money. We need your approval to do so. The first one um, is on the um, ESSER money, but it's for the homeless um, group, and they just gave a second round of allocations out. I guess they didn't allocate it all out the first time around, so we got a little bit more money. The second one was um, a grant that doesn't typically grant carryover from last, unspent monies from the previous year, so they're letting letting us spend the f extra 59000 that we didn't spend last year. And then the third one is the um, idea B for preschool, and we received a little bit more um, extra money in that grant. Okay, any further discussion, questions or comments? Okay, it's been motioned and seconded that we approve the resolution. Ms. Wagner, please call the roll. Mrs. Bates? Aye. Ms. Bolton? Aye. Mrs. Bauer? Yes. Mr. Morosky? Yes. President Jones? Yes. Okay, interim superintendent. Ahmad, do you have a report? I sure do. If we can pull it up, please. Hot off the press, I would like to give an update on the state COVID-19 um, guidelines. There were two specific areas, one around masks to stay, which we are already in compliance with. Mm -hmm. um, and it states direct contact, regardless of vaccination or masking status, may remain in the classroom environment as long as they are asymptomatic. The second guideline is test to play, and this is for athletics and extracurricular. Um, so we would test on initial notification of exposure to COVID-19. If negative and asymptomatic, um, may quarantine in school and participate in activities. But the test will um, be administered again on day five and seven, and if negative, they may test out of quarantine. We are currently seeking guidance from ODH regarding after school programs. It is a pleasure to announce that we have Takesha Ogletree is the recipient of the 2021 Kathy Shelby Award uh, presented by the Department of Education Office of Exceptional Children. This annual award recognizes outstanding special education leaders. She will be recognized in an online conference in November. <laughs> science fund for the family. We are in the process of adopting new science curriculum for the 22-23 school year. Um, I would like to make this public announcement uh, that we will be looking at um, a variety of curriculum on November 6, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. with the Cincinnati Museum Center so everyone can come out and um, get hands on and see what materials are out there. Congratulations to Dr. Belinda Tubbs Wallace. She was honored as one of the 10 women of the year by the Cincinnati Inquirer. So proud of Ms. Tubbs. Renovations of Gamble High School. We had a fantastic presentation from our, our principal, um, and Gamble Montessori High School was featured in the October 
ASHRAE Journal, which is a trade publication for engineers. In March, the journal presented CPS with the Engineering Excellence Award for the ex extensive renovation of the 100-year-old school building. Damn. So getting some national recognition there. I would like to take the time to highlight um, the students who demonstrated firefighting training at Western Hills High School. Students enrolled in the firefighter program participated in hands-on activities. A total of 60 students, grades 9 through 12, are enrolled in the program. The firefighter training program was launched in 2019. Great. And lastly, uh, backpacks were donated to a kindergarten classroom at Pleasant Hill Academy. And I would like to thank Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and IB Store Storehouse for their generous donations. Got a, that, couple, got a couple Alpha AKAs in the house. <laughs> <laughs> that concludes my uh, superintendent's report, along with the written report submitted for approval. Thank you. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendations? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Ms. Wagner, please call the roll. Mrs. Bates? Aye. Ms. Bolton? Aye. Mrs. Bowers? Yes. Mr. Morosky? Yes. President Jones? Yes. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the report of the treasurer? So moved. Is yes. there a second? Second. Any discussion? Ms. Wagner? Mrs. Bates? Aye. Ms. Bolton? Aye. Mrs. Bowers? Yes. Mr. Morosky? Yes. President Jones? Yes. Okay, thank you. One one update, uh, just so folks know that meeting was canceled. The uh, meeting joint meeting with CPS is canceled. It's scheduled for tomorrow. So we'll get back to you, let you know. If, if there's going to be a, um, another meeting scheduled this year, we, once, once we have that conversation, we may decide to wait until next year. We, it just all depends. So we'll let you know. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam President, if I could add, and I, this is an update and, and, uh, kind of an inquiry as well. I, I know there's a lot of controversy right now in a number of school board discussions and, and, and efforts and there's a focus on curriculum but I wanted to say that I've recently in the last couple of days heard from some folks uh, in the districts that are having some disputes about curriculum not us but others where some of the issues that are very nationally well known whether it's the CRT or what have you that terminology has now evolved into using the term culturally responsive curriculum and teaching. That's how broad this has now become. And I just wanted to point out the danger of what that really means. Mm -hmm. And we need to be concentrating on what that actually could impact for us. Uh, because uh, I know that's a, a major priority for us. But now the, the, the terms and they who control the dialogue or the terminology tend to control the debate. But I I thought we, we should make ourselves aware of that evolution of that term. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. I, I agree with you 100 percent. And uh, we need to stay on top. We're, we need to get ahead of it, to be honest, and so that we're not in a position of reacting. Um, I know currently, just as an information piece, that uh, getting some information from OSBA regarding a letter that the NSBA sent to President Biden mm -hmm. around some of this stuff. And there's now question, I mean, OSBA is now questioning even the letter that NSBA, because it had some inappropriate stuff in it. So there's a lot going on from all angles and it's gonna come to us at some point. So I think it would be worth us even, um, I don't know if we wanna assign it to just have a review of where things are, but keep our nose on the grind about it to make sure that we stay ahead of it and are well informed about it. Okay. Any other inquiries and updates? All right, any assignments? Mr. Morosky followed by Ms. Bates. Um, it's an assignment really for us, I guess. Um, 
in the communications department. Um, if people, folks are amenable to it, it's been a while since we have penned an op-ed as a, a body, as a whole. Um, and I think it, you know, in light of uh, a lot of the trauma, of course, our families have experienced the, the past year and a half plus, and certainly uh, the trauma the past few months with all the violence um, around our schools, um, you know, just penning an op-ed and making a statement, obviously, you know, in opposition to the happenings that are occurring around our schools, but also to outline for the community of what we are doing to not only mitigate trauma from COVID, but keep our schools safe and our kids safe. So if the board was amenable to that, obviously the communications department and with President Jones can do a better job of putting this together than I just did. But if folks were amenable to that, if taking the stand is like one body, I think that'd be a good idea. Thank you. I I agree. I think I fully support that and we'll work we'll work on getting something on behalf of the board, getting it out. Thank you. Ms. Bates. Well mine was, you know, definitely along the same lines. And I think we really need to emphasize the collaboration of the community uh in in working on this. I you know that's that's really, really important. I, I there's I don't know, there's an op ed in the paper today by uh, or online, and it's from one of the city council candidates and putting it all on us. Uh, right. And yep. yeah. So, I mean, we, we really want to be at the table. CPS does. I know Superintendent Ahmad mm -hmm. is at the table. Uh, but we really need to, uh, vocalize this mm -hmm. through the op-ed, but yes. I, if the board would uh, would agree, I'd say that our whole theme should be around collaboration. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and we will do that. I, I have actually, and you know, I don't have a lot of uh, faith in social media these days, but I've seen social media posts where people actually, it's like questioning, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are they, you know, as it's a community um, crisis, and we have a role to play. And I think our superintendent has been out and about and uh, working that angle and collaborating with uh, the community. I think the board can take certainly take a position because we all care about the safety of our kids, all of our kids, whether they're CPS kids or not. So I, I believe very strongly that a message needs to be out there representing um, our values in that. So thank you. Anybody else? Assignment? You sure? Having no other business, I declare the meeting adjourned.